Hello and welcome to another Peterson podcast. In this podcast, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to effectively read your science textbook. Now, many students have trouble reading nonfiction and therefore have many myths based on some of that trouble. Basically, it comes down to a simple problem. Kids have problems picking out what the important information is as they read nonfiction. So one of the myths is that the information on the side of the page is not important. I would go so far as to say that the information on the side of the page is the most important. As you read, it's important for you to read the entire page. That includes the paragraphs, of course, but also the figures, the diagrams, even look at the pictures and read the text from the pictures as many times that's the most important information that's on that page. A lot of times students will say also that the most important vocabulary is in bold or highlighted, and those are the only words I really need to focus on. Actually, that's not true. The most important vocabulary are the words that you don't know the meaning to. So if, for example, you're reading a text on organisms, and organisms is highlighted and cells are highlighted, yet you already know the definition of those words and you know that an organism is a living thing and a cell is the smallest part of a living thing, smallest unit of life, you don't really need to worry about those words because you already know them. As you read, you should focus on the words that you don't know what they mean and look for those definitions as you read. One reading is enough. Not necessarily if you read it and don't understand it, you might need to read it again. As we read our textbook, there are several little reading checks between the paragraphs. Read those. Use those as kind of a stop sign to kind of check if you understand what you're reading. If you read the reading check and understand it and can answer the question, go on. If you can't, stop. Go back and reread what you read. You might have read it but you certainly don't understand it. If you read it twice or even three times and d still don't understand it, that would be a good question to ask another student or ask me uh, before or after school or you know, during class. You know, that would be a great time to ask a question. The teacher will go over all the important stuff in class. Not necessarily. I'll go over what I think is important and assume sometimes that you might have read that and understood it. So again, if you come to something that you were asked to read, make sure you read it. And if you don't understand it, bring it to my attention. We're going to use a lot of what's called the Cornell note-taking method, so let me give you the quick breakdown of how that works. Take your sheet of paper and divide it into three different sections. On the left-hand side is where you will record your main ideas. On the right-hand side, you want to record your actual notes. But don't use complete sentences. Try to use abbreviations whenever possible. Make diagrams. Use Venn diagrams. Use thought maps. Use mind webs. Use anything you can do to summarize the information. You're trying to take the information from the book, put it into your own words as part of a summary. And that is the best thing that can, you can do is to use abbreviations and to you know, take a lot of that information and put it into a very short amount of space. As kind of an optional, you can also then summarize it again down at the bottom or, or include a reflection on the summary of all that information on that page. That will be really helpful when it comes time for you to go through that information. So let's look at an example of what one of these might look like. You can see that it's divided into three different sections. On the left-hand side, I have the summaries. I'm sorry, I have the main topics. On the right-hand side, I have a summary, oftentimes using, you know, diagrams. And then on the bottom, I have a reflection. You know, this is an excellent rereading type strategy that will allow you to spend most of your time studying the main ideas. You can even cover up half of it and try to come up with the other half as a great way to study. Studying the notes is, is, is the most important part. Too many times I see students who just take the notes and then never use them as a form of studying. 
And as I said in class, that's just like making a pizza and never eating it. You know, you really want to make sure that you understand that to read is step number one. Taking notes is step number two. And then going back to those notes and using them to learn and to better understand and, and to reflect on is really the third step that just too many students fail to get. That's really an extremely important part. Thank you so much.